In this particular training, we're going to look at the more function as it applies to the house. The first slide here has the house with the mountain and the water. If we click, we center in on the house. If we click again, it centers in on the mountain. If we click again, it centers in on the water. And if we click again, we go back to the main slide. In this second example, we're looking at some bandmates here. We want to show them more functionality. So if I click once, it is at the main screen. If I click again, it center in on Brianne, who's the main band member. If we click again, we center in on David Smith. If I click again, we center in on Brian Kennedy. And if I click again, we go back to the main slide. In this third example for the more functionality for PowerPoint, we have a video production roadmap. If I click once, it's on the main slide. If I click twice, it goes to the first element of the roadmap, which is creating tantalizing videos. If I click again, it goes to increasing market share, which is the second element of the roadmap. If I click once more, it goes to the third element of the roadmap, which is evolving to new technologies. If I click once more, it goes back to the main slide. Good afternoon. In terms of making these slides more tantalizing for the boss, what we're going to do is implement the more functionality for PowerPoint. And in terms of this, I'm going to duplicate this picture for five times so we can try to show you the transitions that we'll make between each slide. So I'm going to click on this first slide and then do a control C and then a control V five times, actually four times, I'm sorry, to make five slides. And on this first slide, I'm going to click on the first slide. And this is a slide that we'll see when we make the transition. So we want to keep this one the same. I'm going to click on the second slide here and then click on the picture within the slide and then right click and go to size and position. On scale height, we see that it's 73% and the scale width is 73%. And the aspect ratio is locked in relative to original picture size is checked. But that's fine. We just want to take the scale height and make it 150% right now so we can magnify the picture. In terms of this picture, we can see that it's centering on the sky and the top of the house here. We want to move this around so that we just see this house and it's in the middle. So that you can see over here on the left side that the house is the focus of the picture. For the third slide, we want to focus in on the mountain or the hill, if you will. So what we're going to do, as I have here, I've clicked on the third slide and I'm going to click on the picture of the third slide, right click again and go to size and position. For scale height, we're going to go to 150% again. And once again, it magnifies the picture. We want to move this around to just focus on the mountain or the hill, if you will. So we'll get it over and you can see that the on the left hand slide, it's centering in on the mountain or the hill. So we can see that the mountain and the hill on the left hand side is the focus of the slide. We want to click on the fourth slide here and uh, once again click on the picture of the fourth slide and then right click and go to size and position and we can see 73% is here once again. We want to put in 150 for the scale height and once again move the slide around and in this particular example we want to focus in on the water. Uh, so we're going to move the slide around until the water is the aspect and you know try to centralize that for the picture. Okay so the water here is the focus of the picture. And for the four, fifth slide this is just coming back to the original slide here. If we slide down on the left hand slide here we can see that the first and the fifth slide are the same. Uh, so do, we just want to bring the audience back to the first slide. Now what the first slide is being selected, indicated by the red box here, we want to do a shift click on the fifth slide so that all slides are selected, one, two, three, four, five. And then we want to click on morph. And this will activate the morph function. With this function being activated, we then want to click on the slideshow 
after we just select the first slide. So we're going to select just the first slide here because that's the beginning of our presentation. And then click on Slideshow. And now you can see that this is the first slide. If we click again, we center on the house. If we click again, it centers on the mountain or the hill. And if we click once more, we center on the uh, water with the reflection. And if we click finally, we go back to the original slide. Now we can go to right click and end show. And that was the uh, example one of how to use the morph function. Now with the boss, the boss wants to actually make some tantalizing slides for the other feature of the presentation. So we're going to a example two here. And we have some bandmates here with four of the bandmates pit being pictured in the slide. And we want to click on this and this slide is selected indicated by the red box circling it. And we want to do a control C to copy it and then a control V four times to make five slides. Now this first slide we want to keep the same as the fifth slide. And I want to show you how we can center in on different bandmates. For the second slide here, we want to make sure that we have a slide that we can come back to in terms of duplicating. So what we want to do is for this first slide, and you can see that this first slide, this, this second slide has already been duplicated. We want to go to the back here and select the slide in the back and then go under picture format and we want to go under color. And under color, we want to go down to this third transition under recolor and make that gray for that particular slide. Now, this first slide on the top we have here, it's a duplicate of the other slide. And what we want to do is slide this particular slide exactly on top of the other slide. And if you need to, you can zoom out here in the lower right hand corner by hitting zoom to make sure that the slides are exactly on top of each other. Now, for this particular slide, the second slide, we want to focus in on just the lead band member here, the one that's singing currently. And we want to go under crop. And we want to select crop and then we're going on to go to crop to shape. You see when we hover over crop to shape, we have an oval and we want to select that oval. Now, when we select the crop to shape with the oval selected, you see there's different handles here. Uh, there's, you have to be cognizant that there's handles for the picture and there's also handles for the crop. So instead of moving these in to center on just the top on the lead band member, we want to click on crop. So we get the crop handles and you can see that the crop handles are a little different here. So we move that in and we center in on lead band member. And we also move the right, the left handle in to further center on the band member and try to get that equal on each side to make it look symmetrical. All right. And in the third slide here, we also have duplicated the slide. And this slide in the back here, do you see we have here on the top, we have the the first slide, we want to keep that in color, but this slide in the back, we want to go under picture format and go under color. And then once again, go under recolor and go to gray. So we can gray that out. And since we've already zoomed out here in the lower or left hand corner, we want to move this slide on top of the other slide. Exactly. And now that we have that exactly centered, we want to go once again to crop and not just crop, but we want to go to crop to shape and I select the oval. And in this particular slide, slide three, we want to center in on the bandmate here that's on the left of the screen. So remember that there's handles for the picture and also handles for the crop. So we need to click crop here to get the crop handles. So we need to make sure that we get this crop handle here. And now we can see that the crop handle is moving. So we can select just that particular person. We need to grab this black handle here. And when it turns into like an L, if you will, we can then select that bandmate and try to make it symmetrical on each side. All right. And we'll do the same for the fourth slide here. 
Well, we have a duplicated slide and what we want to do is select this one in the back here. And with the back slide, we want to go to color once again and then recolor and select this third one, which is like gray background color to light. And that'll make it gray in the background. And since we've already zoomed out here in the lower right hand corner here, we could put these slides exactly on top of each other. All right. With that being done, we can then go to crop, but instead of just doing crop, we want to go to crop to shape. And then once again, select the oval, which is the first one under basic shapes. Now you can see here, since we don't have that L type of shape, if you will, this is the actual picture handle, not the crop handle. So once again, we need to go up to crop. So we get the black L shape handles, and then we can center in on the bandmate on the right hand side. So we can grab this bandaid here and then the left handle on this side, we can bring that all the way over and just select that bandmate. Try to get it symmetrical on each side. All right. And with that being done, we can see that we've selected three bandmates to focus on it. But since our boss definitely wants these slides to be tantalizing, what we can do is on this first slide is create an insert. And we can also select a text box. And with that being selected, we can give this person a name like Brianne. And right now is putting the actual text in a black font. So we could take this and maneuver it above Brianne's head so we can identify her in the actual slide and with this we could select the text and then select maybe a, a yellow or gold color and we could try to position that above her head so i do recognize that there's a space in between brianne davison so i'm going to put a space in there and put a space that way so we can see what that looks like um, what we can do is actually click on the upper left hand corner of this and do a control C and copy this to another slide. So that's Brianne Davison and we can copy this over here to David and drag this above David's head. We could say David. Smith. And David Smith now has this above his head to identify him when we select his picture. Now instead of just selecting David Smith, we want to keep these in line. So instead of Brianne for this slide, we just drag this over in the same ratio and put David Smith. So we now have that above David Smith head. We'll click on the right hand side of this text box and do a control C to copy it and bring it down to the fourth slide and then do a control V to paste it. Now we could see that David Smith name is above David Smith, but we want to put this over Brian's head. So we identify Brian. And with Brian being with this over Brian's head, we can go and change the name to Brian. And we could give him a last name, Foster. Okay, so now we have, if you click on slide two, we have Brianne Davidson, we have David Smith, and we have Brian Foster. And we have them selected. We have the other members grayed out on slides two to just focus on Brianne. On slide three, we have the other members grayed out to just focus on David Smith. And on slide four, we have the other members grayed out to just focus on Brian Foster. Now, similar to the other example, we can click on the first slide and then shift click on this other slide to go to slide five and select all the slides. And then we go under transitions to morph. Now, in terms of that, that's, that's okay in terms of being able to morph. But one of the things that you could do with morph 
is we could also go to slide two and we could select the characters here. And with the characters being selected, if I select Brianne Davis's name, we could go under effect options and then characters. So that will morph the actual characters. And we can go to the third slide and select David Smith and go inside the box and select the characters and go to effect options and characters. Furthermore, we can go to the fourth slide in terms of Brian Foster and select on this and go to effect options and then go to characters once again. So that's morphing not only that, the pictures, but also Brian Foster with the names. And with this, I'll click on the first slide and then select the slideshow option to see what this looks like. With the slideshow being active, we have the first slide here. And then we're clicking again and we see that this is centering on Brianne Davison with her name above. When we click again, you see the characters transitioning over to David Smith's name with them being highlighted. And if we click once more, we go over to Brian Foster and the characters move over to his name. And if we click once again, we see that all the bandmates come back to the slideshow. We'll end the slideshow here and I'll show you the third option. This third example has to do with a proposed 2025 video production roadmap. And what our boss wants us to do in this particular example is make this more exciting and more interesting. Um, so one of the things I want to do is duplicate this slide four times to equal five slides. So I'll click on this first slide to get a red border around the slide. So I do a control C and then a control V four times to duplicate the slide. With this first slide being selected, we want to make sure that the first slide and the fifth slide are the same. And they are indeed the same because we copy them. Now, one of the things that we do here is we have the proposed 2025 video production roadmap for a fictional company, but we want to go to slide two and just center on this first person and the first roadmap. So what we want to do is actually highlight, actually click here on the right hand side and click on the two and the three and the second characters and get rid of them in terms of this picture. Subsequently, we want to go to the third picture and go on the left hand side here and click on the one and the character that's below the one and get rid of that person. We also want to go here on the right hand side and click on the three and also the person underneath and get rid of them. Okay. And then the fourth option, we want to go ahead and go ahead and center on just the third person on the right. So we want to get rid of the things on the left hand side that people under number one and number two. So I'll select them and hit delete. Now, if you look at the slides, we have the first slide here, the main slide one, two, and three. Then we transition to the first slide with the arrow underneath January, 2025. So in the second slide, we also have here increased market share, but we want to move this arrow over. So click on the arrow that's underneath here and just slide it over to align with the July, 2025. Okay, try to put that in the center to make it look great. All right, and on this third example, we have here evolve into new tech areas under three. So select the arrow and put it under December 25th by just sliding, using the right arrow to slide it over to the right. And in terms of this fifth slide, we want to come back to the main slide and the number one. So that's why the arrow is under here. Now with all this selected, we could select the first slide and then go down to the last slide. We want to do a shift click so we have all the slides selected. You see the red boxes are around one, two, three, four, and five. We want to go under transitions and click on morph. Okay. With that being selected, we just want to click on two to just select one particular slide right now. With this slide being selected number two, we want to highlight the text in this box. And not only do we want to morph from character to character, but we want to morph in terms of the characters in the text box. So we hit character there. If we go to the second slide, we also want to morph in terms of the characters. So we want to select the characters within that box. And with the third box, we also want to go in here and morph with the characters. So we go under effect options and go to characters. 
And you could see with the various options that we have here, the slides are morphing between each different slide. Now, if we click on the first slide here, we can see that this is our main slide. And then we go to slideshow option. This is our first slide with all of the options selected for our for the particular timeline with the arrow here under January 2025. Now look at what happens when I click on the slide to advance it. You see that the two actually came down here for the page number and also the arrow is under the first person with the first slide. Now see what happens. That two goes up to the top and actually goes to the number here for the number portion and also the arrow is now underneath these July 2025. Click once again that zero that was under that was for zero two moves over to zero three and then we go into involve a new tech areas. So December 2025 and the arrow is under 2025. And I click once more to sh bring us back to the main slide and I'll right click and in show and I'll run this once again so you can see it at a faster pace. So let me put my cursor on the first slide here and go under slideshow. And then we have the first slide, and then we have the second, and then we have the third, and then the fourth slide, and then the fifth. And that's how you can make your presentations more effective in terms of having transitions and using the more feature here on PowerPoint. So once again, and to summarize, you could do this with various different examples. You could do this with a picture example to center on various things like a house, the water, and also a mountain range. If you also want to select people for different things like a band, you could click on here and you can make the background gray and only use morph combined with the crop function to center on various bandmates. And finally, you could use a roadmap or a timeline for a business presentation where you can center on different people and the examples and also move the arrow in the roadmap. I want to thank you for watching and hopefully this is tantalizing enough for the boss. Thanks once again for watching. Bye-bye.